Welcome to The Well Woman Show. Each episode is a transformational journey using mindfulness, feminism, leadership, and strategy to support you to thrive personally, generate wealth, and impact your community. And now, here's your host, feminist thought leader, London School of Economics grad, leadership consultant, and transformational coach, Giovanna Rossi. Hello, hello, Well Women. Giovanna here. And today I am, let's see, it's an unusual day where I live because it's raining. Um, usually we have blue skies and sun, even if it's cold in New Mexico. Um, it's, uh, it's unusual to have a lot of rain, but it's welcome. So it's lovely to have all of the moisture. Um, if you're listening to this as this show releases, it's uh, late fall, he- heading into Thanksgiving, and it's a time of year where we're gearing up for the holidays. Um, we're looking at our year end approaching, and so there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on with us personally and professionally, and lately I have been really enjoying um, talking with a lot of you, uh, one-on-one about what you're up to and, uh, what your big goals are and what your challenges are and just really getting clear about that. And one question that has come up actually several times that I wanted to address here on the show today is about relationships during your transition or your transformation. And um, I actually called this show Relationships During Your Transformation, Five Tips for Not Getting Derailed by the People Closest to You. Because really, many of us are in transition. I mean, we're all in transition all the time, right? Like nothing is ever fixed forever. So there's always an element of transition in, in whatever we're doing in our personal or professional lives. But when we're in a place of real transformation, uh, things get a little wacky, (laughs) right? Um, if you're in a real transformative place in your life, something really big is going on with you personally or professionally. Um, this is a time when your relationships, the people who are closest to you, really matter, right? Because those are the people that you turn to generally when something big is going on. Um, so it, it, it begs the question, like, what, what is the best way to handle relationships with close people when you yourself are birthing a new identity? You are emerging from uh, perhaps a sort of a sleep state, maybe, you know, maybe you haven't, um, been asleep all your life, but lately you have been in, in whatever stage you're in, in your life. And now you're awakening. Um, or like me many years ago, I had really been sleeping all of my life and I I had a major awakening, right? And so the relationships around me all shifted when that happened. Um and not not necessarily, you know, ba- a bad thing. And um and you definitely this definitely does not mean that certain relationships have to end, although that could be something that happens. This show is more about sort of how do you handle those relationships when you yourself are emerging as a new, uh, as the new you, as the real you, right? When your true self is really emerging. So I have five tips for you, and I'm going to start those in a minute. But really, this came up Um, with a few of my clients recently, because it's just, it's, it's really difficult for the people closest to you to relate to your growth or your transformation sometimes, right? So it's either difficult for them to relate to you, or it's difficult for you to communicate it to them in a way that makes sense in, in the, in the usual way that you're used to communicating with them. So when you're emerging or awakening, transforming, your identity is really shifting. And that won't be super comfortable for some people 
whose own identity relies on you staying the same as they've known you. So I'm going to say that again, because this is key to really, um, really understanding this and then applying some of these tips that I'm going to share. So your identity is shifting. Okay, if you're in a place of transformation, and if you're listening to this show, that's probably the case, or you've been through a recent transformation, or you're headed into one, um, your identity is shifting, you are no longer who you were, your, your true self is emerging. And that won't be super comfortable for some of the people close to you and around you, whose own identity, their own identity relies on you staying the same as they've known you. So what do we do with that? Right? We can, uh, as with everything from my perspective, and, and from the well woman uh, perspective, we deal, we try to deal with everything with compassion. So really understanding that first, right, being aware of that compassion, and, um, and also uh, love for yourself. So not letting that impact your own transformation and, and halt or derail you. So, so what do we do then? I'm going to go through five tips here. And if you want to um, check out more of this and, um, and like have a, have a conversation with us in the community group, you can head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. And I'll start a thread over there where we can talk about this too. But um, the first tip I have for you, number one is what people say is about them, not you. Okay, and I use this a lot. I say this in many circumstances. But it's, it's really foundational and fundamental to, um, to not, (laughs) not being derailed by by other people, right? So what people say is about them, not you. So many times when we're experiencing a, a change or a transformation, people around us like to criticize us. Um, oh, you, you know, you're not, that's not who you are. You're what, who do you think you are? Um, how do you think you can do that? Right. Criticism or judgments, um, that comes up a lot. And when people say, who do you think you are to do that? Or, or something like that, right. Or they imply that really what they're saying is, who am I to not do that? Who, who am I? How, how am I not doing that? Right. So really try to reframe before you react and, and see with compassion that what they're saying is really not about you. You don't have to take it personally. You do not take it personally. Um, it, it's the same with blame. They, people might start blaming you for things. <clears throat> this came up in a conversation, uh, this week and, um, you know, you can either choose to accept that and take that blame on or to reflect it back to the person or deflect it and not take it on. So really, it's your choice. What people say is about them, not you. Put that on a sticky note and put it on your computer (laughs) or up on your board. It's a really important one. Okay, number two, what you say is about you not them. We'll be right back. I'm so thankful for support from Natural Awakenings Magazine in New Mexico, a monthly green healthy lifestyle publication, and for support from High Desert Yoga, promoting optimum physical health, clarity of mind and spiritual inspiration for all. Many of you have followed my journey from consulting to women's leadership and empowerment, starting a nonprofit, raising two kids and everything in between. I've really taken some time this year to focus in on where I can help the most women with their own desire to create social impact and also a good income for themselves and their families. As my consulting and coaching practice is growing, I found that one of my favorite things to do is the free discovery sessions. I love hearing about people's passions for the work they do, sharing what I do, and helping people understand what my hybrid consulting coaching is all about. 
hint, hint, serious strategy plus spacious mindset. So if you find yourself worrying about whether you'll ever make it in the thing you're pursuing or waking up in the middle of the night anxious about money, lacking energy you need to get everything done or procrastinating on moving forward with projects and tasks, or even if you're in a leadership role, but you're second guessing yourself and not getting things done, I'd love to talk to you. These conversations help me get clear on how I can help more leaders create the impacts and income they want so they can start living with ease and joy. Plus, you'll get a free hour with me to get crystal clear on what you want to create for your company or organization and your life and what's been holding you back. So if you're interested, you can book a call at wellwomanlife.com slash learn more. We're back on the Well Woman Show. All right. So what does that mean? What you say, what you put out into the world, who you are, what you do is about you, not about other people. And I say this in the way of like, in in this context of relationships, right? There might be other contexts where I say what you say should be about them, right? That's when you're relating to someone, when you're sharing something with someone. But in this context of really protecting your transformation and not being derailed, What you say is about you, not about them. So for example, um, when I say to someone in, in the well woman group or uh, to a friend, um, I don't drink coffee anymore. That doesn't mean that I don't think you should drink coffee anymore, right? That just means I don't drink coffee anymore and I have my reasons and I have my story about that. Um, so remembering that what you're putting out in the world is your story. It doesn't mean that you're judging other people or that, uh, you're criticizing someone for, you know, not doing it the way that you're saying you're simply sharing your story so that the people who really do need to hear it can hear it. So that's number two, what you say is about you, not them. Number three is give people space. Give people space around you, the people that love you and that you love and that you're close to and that you've been close to over the years. Give them some space during your transition and don't rely on them the way you have in the past to get your needs met by them. Okay. During your transition, you're really, a lot of this is about you're meeting your own needs now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're meeting our own needs. And some people, as I said in in the first point, some people are going to be thrown by that. Like they they need you to need them. That that was your whole relationship. Um, And so the, the shift is going to perhaps be a little turbulent. So you can give them some space. You don't you don't need to tell them or share everything with them while you're going through this give some space, uh, and don't completely rely on them for getting your needs met. You may want to share your goals with some people and choose not to share your goals with other people. And this should be really intentional for you, right? Um, when you're going through a big change like this, you really want to share with people who are going to cheer you on and, um, that's super important because usually we like to share everything with our, with the people who are close with us and what they say can just really dig in like a knife and we are derailed, right? It's like, Oh, I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, you're right. Um, so really choose wisely who you share with, share with people who are cheer you on. And these, some of these people might not be the people closest to you. You might have a mixture of of people now that you're really sharing this um, journey with. What you don't want is people giving you the quote unquote reality check, (laughs) right? Like you can give yourself a reality check. We do that really well all the time. Uh, You don't need other people doing that for you, which really um, amounts to negativity and you shouldn't be doing that. 
So you want to keep it positive and, um, you know, communicating with people who really will cheer you on. Okay. So number four, uh, give yourself space. So number three was give other people space. Number four is give yourself space. And this is super important because while we're in a really intense transformative stage, we aren't going to necessarily want to do the same things that we were doing. Um, all of a sudden, certain things seem completely irrelevant, right? <laughs> like things that you used to just always do every week at the weekend, you know, uh, whatever it is, you might now think, oh, that's, I'm completely uninterested in that now. And, and that's fine. Go with that. Spend some time alone. Really go in inward and give yourself that space. Um, and the way you can do that, there are lots of different ways. And hopefully you're getting some ideas as you're hearing me speak. But, you know, a couple of ideas. I love to book a solo retreat at least annually. I, I would love to do it more often. I still have little kids at home, so it gets difficult, but, um, a solo retreat will really energize you and give you that space to, um, feel into and take action and emerge and allow that identity to really come forward. So, um, the other thing that you can do is if you can't take, you know, a couple of days for a solo retreat, you could just simply book a soak at a local spa or a massage. Um, it doesn't have to be something super expensive. It could even just be going and getting your nails done or going for a walk, um, a beautiful hike with your dog. It can be whatever it is where you get some solo time to reflect. Um, okay. So we've done four. We're on the last one. Number five is the four R's reevaluate, reaffirm, rearrange and release. So they're pretty self-explanatory. The, when we're talking about relationships during your transformation and really wanting to hold your power, stand your ground, step into who you really are and speak your truth, you are going to want to reevaluate some of your relationships. And that means doing the four steps that I just talked about and really looking at um, who do you want to be spending time with? Uh, You can love someone very, very much like an old best friend, a best friend from high school or someone from college or whatever it may be. You can love them very much and you can decide not to spend a whole lot of time with them. Uh, they're not mutually exclusive. So after you reevaluate your relationships, you want to reaffirm some of them. Yes, I want this person in my life daily or weekly. And this is how I'm going to reaffirm this relationship. Um, and then you want to rearrange some of them. Rearranging your relationships is I want to move this relationship to quarterly or annually. Because I love this person dearly and I don't want to cut, you know, cut the relationship off, but it's not serving me to hang out with them weekly or monthly. Um, I think, you know, moving that to more of a quarterly or annual would be best for me. That's rearranging. And then finally we have releasing. So releasing is really um, hard sometimes. And uh, if, you know, we've all, we've all done this where you, it's basically a breakup uh, with a friend or a loved one. Uh, and if it's a family member that you can't actually <laughs> get rid of, um, it, it's still a release, right? It's a release of obligations to that person. It's a release of uh, your energy going uh, towards that person. And, um, and it's a release of your, your time and investment with, with that person. So that's the fourth one release. So the four R's are reevaluate, reaffirm, rearrange and release. 
So you should, uh, you know, you should be able to use those to really, um, to really look at your relationships and see sort of where you want to be spending your time. So I hope this was helpful today. I would love to hear from you about your relationships or your transformation. You can uh, email me at info at wellwomanlife.com. And for those of you who are not aware, I am doing one-on-one coaching now. And so if you want to explore working with me, um, I'm doing free discovery sessions. You can book those on my website, wellwomanlife.com. And, uh, or you can email me and we can talk about it. Info at wellwomanlife.com. And I'd love to hear from you. I would love to hear what you're working on, what you're struggling with. Um, and I'd love to hear some feedback on this relationships episode. So uh, head over to the Facebook group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook as well. If you want to talk in community with other women. And uh, I'll catch you on the next show. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your well woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our community. As a reminder, we are on NPR every week. So be sure to tune in at npr.org slash podcasts and search for The Well Woman Show. If you enjoyed today's show, please take a moment and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.